Welcome everyone. Nice to see everyone here. So um, what we're going to do right now is we're going to start off with a quick hello and then I'm going to jump into what is going on with the crypto market. Obviously, there's been a lot of questions of Joel, what is going on with the market? What's happening? Um, you know, and there's a little bit of fear and understandably, there's a little bit of uh, you know, there's definitely some fear in the market for sure. So let me let me kind of tell you what's been going on here and, um, you know, what we're actually starting to see in the market. And, you know, we're going to look at a couple things today, like the CME futures and how that's affecting it. If you're watching right now, guys, uh, do me a favor and just say hi hi axel i see you there sean nice to see you eric um and richard great seeing all you guys if you could do me a favor will we start right now and just share this uh to your favorite group if you're watching on facebook subscribe hit the like button uh and we'll get started it's nice to see you lillian axel uh richard and everyone else I hope you guys are having a good day. I know it's been a really stressful one for a lot of people and that's okay. We're going to definitely move forward and have, you know, a better day, so to speak, um, from this. So don't worry about things. We're not out of, uh, we're not in the uh, doghouse yet, as some way we say. So chill. Uh, Leroy, what's up, man? How you doing? It's really great to see you. Um, if you guys haven't seen Leroy's amazing uh, journey in crypto, you should. Uh, and here's the thing. I just want to stress this uh, a lot. I want to stress this a lot. If you're freaking out right now and you're a retail and you're normal people like me and everyone else here, just take a step back and stop trading for at least one day, at least one day. Um, if you're feeling emotional right now, that's normal. I can tell you right now that even myself, I had a little bit of uh, maybe a greedy streak, you could say, and I didn't sell um, some things in profit when I could have and didn't wreck me. I'm still very much in profit this month, but it took away some of my profits. So we all learn that, you know, some things will suck sometimes, but we're going to definitely push forward and be OK. But I want to talk about what the CME futures has to do with the BTC price, as well as looking into a couple things to teach you guys about uh, bullish and bearish divergences and hidden divergences when you're looking at the chart. And on top of that, I'm going to go into as well what some experts think are going to happen and what to look for, as well as last but not least, um, some security details that you can do very easily to make sure you don't have any problems. Rocks, nice to see you. And yes, always great to educate everyone in the masses. So let's get started. So the CME futures are expiring today um, in the US. Uh, so right now it's like the morning time in the US where they're probably just waking up at like 6.30, 6 a.m. depending. So that's, you know, that's all good. But I want to talk about what's happened in the past um, and it kind of gives you a clearer picture. So in December of uh, 2018, we saw that... Um, you know, we saw the market fell here and we can see that if you follow my cursor that we've had, uh, we definitely fell and we, we moved in the market on a negative trajectory um, when the futures uh, closed. And we'll look at also in June, the same thing. So here was June right here. Uh, and we saw in June to July and that red dotted line is where we found support. Uh, so we had another negative movement and obviously we, re we retraced a lot so yeah okay so uh, richard says yesterday sucked going in at nine thousand and tanked immediately always happens to me but today feeling better as i'm holding i can live with that yeah rich what uh what happens is you get that fomo feeling of like oh i'm gonna miss out and the, the problem is when that happens generally that's some uh, it's a fake out right so a lot of people got faked out yesterday i just lost profits because i was in from 8500 and then it just kept falling and falling and so um if you guys ever used bitmex before which i've been using a little bit more more and experimenting with you get these things like uh oh system overload and so basically you could try to sell it but it won't actually sell now we're building into the athena bot that you can actually have an api and apis don't have that problem so we're working on that as well but so we've seen that every time the futures market the three month futures close it's usually a negative and it's something to note 
as well. So May as well, we saw some negative trajectory here uh, where we started to fall. And even May, right? Like May was a very good month, but we still saw you no know, negative movement in the market and we're closing now. Um, and we're gonna, and this is on a 15 minute chart, but still we're closing now on a downtrend yet again. And this could cause us to move even further down. So people have been talking about that 30% correction. Is it coming right now? No guarantees. But it's something that you should definitely keep your eye on because the CME futures contracts when they expire generally lead to a negative trajectory. And I want to show you something else. We also had this. Why do you always do the opposite of what they say on CNBC? Because literally, if you watched CNBC yesterday, he would have faked you out himself how Jim Trade makes money. Well, he definitely did not make any money yesterday because he said that we should take profit above nine, $9,020. And as we saw, it went over 9,000 and it just dumped like crazy. So again, always kind of uh, what my plan is always do the opposite. I didn't see this in time, but there were several things that I saw yesterday that I should have known this might be coming. Um, and this is what FOMO does. It makes you emotional and get too happy or overly sad. And then you freak out either way. You freak out as like, I have to hold it. It's going to keep going up. Or you freak out as like, uh, I need to sell it because it's going down. So those two fears, uh, fear and greed emotions, you need to you need to learn to hone those in. And when you feel those, ask yourself if you're feeling that. And then if you are, do the opposite. <laughs> Generally, that's a really good play. So as we've seen, um, is something really interesting here. The CME expires at 4 p.m. London time, which is in quite a few hours from now, uh, about eight seven, eight hours or something like that. May was a big month for the CME contract, but would not expect fireworks as the positions have been rolled. Only 544 contracts are still open versus 2,700 uh, at the time last week. So many people have closed their positions. So don't expect very much from the CME, okay? It's not gonna really do much, but something to keep your eye on as well. Now, another thing that happened that was very bullish is we had billionaires were said to be buying up Bitcoin. And apparently one billionaire is going to the next level of trying to buy not just a little bit of Bitcoin, but up to 25% of the market. We're talking about 25% of all Bitcoin. And here's another thing that maybe you don't know about 8 million to 9 million Bitcoin haven't even moved at all this whole entire market, the whole cycle that we've had. Uh, and it might even be 10 million, I believe. But that's a lot of the Bitcoin when you only have uh, when you've lost four. So there might be like five, six, seven million in circulation approximately. No one knows for sure. But there's a lot of Bitcoin that hasn't moved at all. And someone's trying to buy that much. And the whole idea for Bitcoin was one person would not control it all. So it'd be equal opportunity. But this is what fear and greed does. It makes people scared. They sell their Bitcoin and rich people pick it up and then they pump the price up. And that is how you you know, see it. Now there's that really cool tool I showed you guys. So as you see dollars here, it also shows you sats. If you haven't got that tool, uh, you just download it. It's called, um, let me just check what it's called again. Use, get used to Bitcoin. This is a really cool tool to use because uh, every time you see dollars, it will show you how many sats that amount is. So we broke over 9,000. We had this nice correction that that's coming on and uh, it could continue down. But we're going to I'll tell you what to look for at the end of the episode of what to keep your eye on by the daily close today. Uh, and that will be very key in knowing if we're actually going to drop even more or we're going to possibly have some recovery and continue with a higher low. OK, so let's let's just continue on now. I don't know if you guys saw this, but this is not the EOS news that everyone was talking about. EOS is now going to be available on Coinbase as of yet last night. So basically everyone thought they were, but now they're actually gonna be on Coinbase.com, not Coinbase Pro, which means they're actually going to be on the main Coinbase app. Probably soon I'm gonna guess they're gonna offer free uh, Coinbase, um, on free uh, tokens on Coinbase for EOS like they have for Stellar and Xerox and others. Because 
because it's a very community driven project and we do know that they bought ram already about 25 million dollars of ram they've been buying up some tokens and the big thing coming is this social network that's coming that will you know be way better than steam potentially is going to have kyc potentially will not have any bots no apis it will be legit people which is really interesting i think edge wallet allows balance in satoshi if i remember correctly yeah it does absolutely um rocks but what this does is every website that you go to using this ad, this add-on on the computer it will show you dollars in satoshis on every single website you go which is super cool all right now let's get on to a little bit of education for you guys and talk about what a bullish and bearish RSI divergence looks like and why you should look for these. I will give you examples from even yesterday that would have got you out of the market around $8,990 if you had seen this on time. And so this is stuff that can help you mitigate massive amounts of loss as I'm sure you probably all felt a little bit, even if you were, you know, only professional traders I know did not feel any losses yesterday. Um, and even some felt very harsh losses, like one of my buddies lost 15 Bitcoin, um, but he's quite a bag holder, so he's good. Now, here's how it works. When we're having a, a lower low and a higher low, or higher, so we have a higher high, okay? So we move up and we have a lower low. So what happens is the price action starts to move down on a bullish divergence. So we're moving down on the price action, yet our RSI, our indicator could be MACD as well. Our oscillator starts to trend up. So when there's that divergence, meaning there's an opposite thing happening, um, when the price is going down and the oscillator starts shooting up, usually we will see this upward momentum, right? And on the other side of bearish divergence, and we draw this from the bottoms, okay? When we're bullish, and I'll show you why we draw the because there's hidden bullish divergences as well. We draw it from the bottom and we draw it from the bottom. So if you're looking for a bullish divergence, go bottom to bottom. Okay. And when we're looking for a bearish divergence, go top to top. Okay. So up from the top of the chart to the top of the chart. So here on the top of the chart, we make a higher high on price action. So here is a, it's a little bit higher on the top high. And then when we go to the RSI or oscillator like MACD, we can see that it makes a lower high. So when we have a divergence again, when we're moving up and our RSI starts to angle down, we might have a movement down. And I'm gonna show you how this actually affected Bitcoin yesterday. So you should definitely uh, start learning about divergence. Not very hard, but just remember the two things that one, a bullish divergence is bottom to bottom and a bearish divergence is top to top. So you use the tops of the chart and the top of the oscillator and the bottom of the chart and the bottom of the oscillator and they should do the opposite, okay? A hidden bullish, a bullish divergence is also from the bottom, but now our price action is going up, but our, our stochastics or oscillator like RSI or MACD is actually trending down. This is one that's really good to know because if you see this, generally it leads to price action increasing. And same with the bearish um, divergence. Again, we go on the top of the chart uh, and the top of the oscillator. If we see that the, the we're making lower highs on the bearish divergence, we're making lower highs, yet our, our stochastic or RSI is making a higher low, generally that means we'll have a bearish divergence. And let's look at the example from yesterday that could have saved you a lot of heartache. So looking here, we have a bearish divergence, okay? So a bearish divergence, we use the tops of the charts because we're looking for um, price action to move down. And we could see that we had this bearish divergence where the price action actually increased. Even though it went down, we still see that it increased over here. Well, here on the RSI, it actually decreased on the four hour. What this would tell you is this is coming next. And we saw what came next what we'll see right here uh and we saw that and it, it hurt us i'm sure if you didn't get out there it would hurt you but how do you know how to get out use these divergences the bearish divergence which means that our price had a new high and our, our rsi had a new uh lower low a lower high obviously that means that we were in trouble we could have um price action start to move down and it's exactly what happened okay so Look at that stuff when you're trying to figure out uh, where the market's going. And if you see something like this, like a bearish divergence on the four hour, look for larger time frames. And the reason why we use larger time frames is simple. The longer the time frame, whether it be a day, a week, a month, the more accurate your calls will be. If you use 15 minutes, you're going to have a lot of calls that don't hit. So use a higher time frame for a more accurate call. 
So we see that we had this bearish divergence here. And then right after that happened, within a few minutes, Bitcoin started to drop drastically. Now, what's cool is um, we hit the Kujin bounce. What that means is this line right here is what we call the seller's, um, you know, the seller line. And here's the buyer's line or Tekken and Kujin. Now, the Kujin, it bounced right off of that and been holding support at that Kujin, right? So that's not a bad thing. And it's slowly tapering up. We don't know if that means anything. We could have that third big drop down still. And I kind of expect it. So just be very careful of that. But if we close a little bit higher than here, well, on the weekly, we'll be okay. Now let's look at a couple other examples. So bearish divergence. So here we see that we made a, our price action made a higher, uh, higher high and our RSI made a lower high. When we see that, we usually see um, the price to go down. So it didn't move superbly uh, on a really harsh movement here, but this is still something that you could see. And even though it doesn't look like a lot on a four hour to move all the way down there, let's just look at how much percent we're looking at. We're looking at uh, five, six, seven, eight percent on on uh, Ethereum. So it looks small, but it's actually quite a bit. And it's also what you can see here. This is a tech imbalance. So it bounces off that support line. So Kujin, um, Kujin and Tekken and Ichimoku, uh, it actually acts as support, a visual support. So you can use that to help your trading. Now, moving on, I wanna show you another example. So on Litecoin, we've had a couple different examples recently. And here is one, a hidden bearish divergence and a hidden bullish divergence. So we had this hidden bearish divergence where we made a lower high on the price and we made a higher low right here on the RSI or the stochastic. What that means is we're actually going to usually trend down. And what you saw in this chart right here, I'm sure you can see it nice and clearly, is that we started to move down from there. And we're talking about um, anywhere between 13% or so. So it definitely moved a lot. So you see how these little oscillator, these little tricks, hidden and bear, hidden bearish divergence, hidden bullish divergence, bullish divergence, bearish divergence can actually help you. Well, we also have one right now and we haven't seen it play out. So this is a really cool one for you guys because I wanted to show you that maybe it will. So something that you keep in mind, look at Litecoin right now, go to your chart and see how we have a hidden bullish divergence. So we see that the price is making a higher low and we're making a lower high, uh, making a lower high. So this is a really interesting situation here because the RSI is angling down, yet our price is starting to angle up. And even though we had the dump, it's still doing that. So it's very likely that we could see uh, this action move up again. So keep your eyes on that over the next day or two because we're on the four hour candle and see if this one actually plays out. If it does, we easily could see the 0.14 range uh, on Bitcoin to Litecoin again. And as we know, the halving's coming up soon. And as we know, um, we should be very cautious of the halving uh, about 40 days before, as I've said in the past. If anyone has any questions, guys, just throw them in there so I can clarify anything that you don't understand. Now here's what I've seen from Luke Martin, and um, he's he's pretty well known in the space. He feels that the contrarian, but until there are closes below the 8180 mark for BTC, he's still viewing this just as a retest of the weekly um, resistance. So here's our weekly resistance, as you can see on the chart. And so he's saying that as long as we don't close below this 8180 line, Okay, below that, um, below just the candle closing on that on that hour on that four hour chart. What that means is we're probably just still in the clear and there's nothing to worry about. So keep that in mind that you don't have anything to worry about as long as we stay above 8180, we should be fine. And it's something that we have to be very cautious of and keep your eyes on. So watch for that weekly close. See if it bounces from this zone and where we go next. Now, one thing I just wanted to point out really cool is even though we had this dump, Athena, our trading bot, had a huge win even through this huge dump. 
Uh, we called RDN a few days back on the 29th, which is two days ago, around this exact time uh, at 320, uh, 3,627 sats, and it actually has already reached 54%. So Athena is doing great. Even in this uh, turmoil, we still have some nice wins. Even though we've had a couple losses, we do use the trailing stop, so we mitigate risk that way as well. Now... Last but not least, this is actually kind of funny. And Steven, I know you're watching. Uh, he posted this and I, I'm going to use it because I think it's great and funny and informative. Seriously, please remove your phone number as a recovery for everything, especially Google. It takes two seconds. Do it right effing now. My account uh, .google.com slash security. Why you should do this. Edit, remove recovery phone. Edit, remove recovery email. Enable two-step verification via email. Google Authenticator or Hardware Go. Why you should be doing this? Well, simple as this, delete your phone number from your email. If you ever fall victim to a SIM port attack, which is how people lose a lot of money, um, your phone numbers are never secure. So he shows a step-by-step -step on this and I will tag this link in the video so you guys can just check for that after I'm done uh, the live feed. I will post that in here. You can just come back and check all the links to today's stuff that we've been doing. And make sure that you look and do this because if you are victim of a SIM port attack, nothing will happen to you if your phone numbers aren't there. But if your phone numbers are there, there's not much people can do for you. You will be SOL, shit out of luck. There won't be much anyone can help you with, okay? Now, that's pretty much all I have to say today. If you guys have questions, this is your floor. Do uh, let me know what you guys are thinking. Let's just look over here and see where Bitcoin might be going on the weekly right now. So let's check it out. Um, so last week we closed uh, right here. So this is why there's an 8180. So you guys are probably asking like why 8180? Well, the close last week actually closed the top, but um, if we, the bottom of this candle closed at 8180, right? So what, what we're saying here is we're not making a, uh, lower high we're making higher highs so you see what higher high means is like every week that we closed except for this one but starting uh, on April 22nd we closed higher we closed higher we closed higher we closed higher so he's saying look here to make sure we close higher um, than than this area right there now we might not but if this can this candle still be above but if we close below uh, where this where this body closed here that is where we're in trouble. We probably will start to see the movement on a negative trajectory down. And it will probably be that, you know, 30% correction uh, into this $5,800 range. And why people say $5,800, it's quite simple. We can just take a Fibonacci chart and look at our, um, look at where we would be going. So usually we retrace to um the 618 and actually i should do the the next the first lowest low so we would be looking at um you know in this 618 range 0 0.618 range to bounce off i don't think we'll bounce off um i know i really don't believe we'll bounce off uh 60 6231 but those are the two ranges to keep your eye on as well as 5800 range on top of it so there's no other questions guys i don't see any on the on facebook or on youtube i will let you guys go keep your eyes on bitcoin make sure that you watch for that weekly close and if you want make sure to learn about the divergences because they will help you either save money on the way down or make money on the way up make sure that you do these things because it's a really simple tool to learn and you can make a lot of savings on losses uh, or make very nice potential uh, gain. So thanks a lot, everyone. See you later, Roxana, Ed, Adel, Yas, Lincoln, uh, Clinton, Leroy, uh, Stephen, Febin, Richard, Sean, Eric, everyone that's here. Thank you very much for watching. I will be making vi videos at least twice a week uh, live and I'll be making other videos as well posting them on YouTube. So get on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's just uh, the YouTube uh, is www.youtube.com slash C Athena education so just search that on youtube so you can get on there and don't miss anything and i'll uh, have a great day everybody don't stress out we're gonna be okay bitcoin is not dead we're not having a lower low we're not having a higher low yet uh, a lower high yet but watch for that and also watch for this to play out let's see 
if we play out this hidden bullish divergence. Let's see if, if Litecoin will play it out and bounces and moves up over the weekend. Keep your eyes on that. Coach K signing out. Have yourselves a great day.